everybody else. Perfect. Welcome, everybody. I am so excited to be here with you guys. I'm going to start with a little introduction. So my name is Eden Galetta. I work for the DAAD Information Center in Johannesburg. And I am here with you guys to talk to you about the opportunities to study in Germany and what the benefits are of obtaining an international education. Today, I'm also joined by my director, Dr. Anja Halleke. And we together will be here with you today and we are representing the DAD. I hope you have your pens and notepads ready, even if it's mental, because there's a lot of information that's going to be shared today. And fret not, if you do not, um, if you have any questions, we are going to have a small Q&A session towards the end of the presentation. So I'll first be presenting and then we'll get to that. Ready when you guys are. Right, so um, I would just like to start by talking a little bit about the DOD and letting you guys know what we do. So the DOD is the world's largest funding organization for the international exchange of students and researchers. As many do know, the DOD awards scholarships and grants for research and studies with the goal of promoting research mobility. So the DOD consists mainly of 241 member universities and 104 student bodies, right? So the activity- so, 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 so. Um, excuse, Was there a question? Uh, no, sorry, that was me. I just unmuted the other computer that uh, we are- Oh, no. Thank you. Oh, no problem, no problem. So the activities actually go beyond this. And the DOD supports the internationalization of the member universities. They promote German language abroad and studying uh, German studies. The DOD also assists developing countries in establishing effective universities and advises decision makers on matters of cultural, education, and development policies. So as you can see on the slide, the DOD has offices in more than 60 countries providing information and us in Johannesburg as well, we are an information center. And what we do is we provide information and consultation on study and research in Germany to South African institutions, members of the higher education management, academics, researchers, and students. We also coordinate a variety of projects and programs in higher education, as well as facilitate higher, higher cooperation between South Africa and Germany. If you, I'm sure you don't have your phones right now, but on the PowerPoint slide that will be shared with you later, there's a QR code in the corner that will link you to the DAD website. So if you'd like to find out a bit more about us and what we do, you are free to visit the website and do reading. Right. So to the exciting part of the presentation, why study in Germany? So Germany is very famous for delivering a high quality education with a large variety of courses to choose from. And when you study in Germany, the qualification you get is recognized globally and has a great reputation. So you will have an advantage when you enter into an international labor market. Apart from receiving a great education, as I'm sure your parents would want you to get, is you get an, um, you get an expansion of a worldview and you get to develop cross-cultural awareness and you also get the chance to network with an international community and with a German community. And these are important skills that you can take with you when you are entering your future careers. So one of the things that stands out about the germ getting an education in Germany is that the educational system takes on a more practical approach and it's research-based. And some of the programs actually have integrated internships. When I say it's research-based, um, at some of the universities, you'll find that the professors, they teach with current research data and they also integrate their own research into teaching. So this approach is taken from your first year already. So when you start your bachelor's degree, but as in South Africa, in the, um, when you're doing your bachelor, your undergraduate, it's more theoretical based. And then when you're reaching honors level or master's level, that is when these research approaches are incorporated. So this is actually, this approach is taken because Germany is known and has a reputation for having top level research and they pride themselves around innovation. So they really invest in these higher learning institutions and you as international students, as well as their own students to build towards this, right? 
So um, next, there are many, 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 many higher learning institutions to choose from in Germany, most of which are state-funded universities. So there are 108 universities, 211 universities of applied sciences, and 116 private universities. There are also art schools that you can choose from. And within the, this group of um, universities and um, schools, you have a choice of 20,000 degree programs to choose from. But important to note is that 1,500 of these are taught in English. However, only 141 of these are taught in BA programs or taught in English. So that is where your German knowledge comes in. If you are considering studying and doing your bachelor degree in Germany, it is crucial for you to have a good knowledge of the German language and you also have to prove that. So that will be roughly on the level of B2, right? So as you can see, um, and as I've mentioned, the higher education landscape is very diverse and this diversity allows you to pursue a specific interest. So most of the courses are focused on practical training to students with clear career paths. And when I say this, what I also want to add is that German universities don't offer general degree programs. So if you were to study in South Africa, do your bachelor's here, there are also the options for you to do general degrees such as BCom general, BA general, BSc general. And this allows you to pick subjects from um, that relate to different topics. And then once you reach honors level, you may specify in a specific um, topic of interest. And the advantage of this is that you don't, I'm not saying you don't really have to, but you still have, sorry, you still have time to decide on what you want to study. If you're going to study in South Africa, however, when you're going to apply to study in Germany and do your BA, it is advisable to know exactly what interests you and what you would like to study. As I've mentioned, um, Germany invests a lot in research and higher education. So you will have access to state-of-the-art facilities and to great equipment from the get-go that will um, provide you with all the tools necessary for you to succeed academically, right? To the next point, and this is what makes a German education or studying in Germany attractive to a lot of students and parents, is that there are virtually no tuition fees. However, why do I say virtually? That is because some of the federal states in Germany, for example, Baden-Württemberg, they, they are fees that are um, applied to non-EU citizens. So if you are coming from South Africa, for example, with a foreign university entrance qualification, you might still be required to pay fees. Right, next. So um, I've spoken a lot on the diversified higher education. I would just like to give you a breakdown on the different institutions that you can apply to. So first you've got universities and these courses have a strong academic emphasis um, with different subject groups you can choose from. And then you have the technical universities which are actually very high um, ranked in Germany. And these focus more on teaching for a specific career, mostly in the fields of engineering and natural sciences. And then you've got the University of Applied Sciences which have a more practice or more practice orientated and they move a bit away from the research teaching. However, to note um, the difference between these three institutions is that the University of Applied Sciences, you can only do your BA and your masters, whereas with the technical universities and the universities in Germany, you have the option of furthering your studies and doing your PhD at these institutions, right? And then there are also for those of you who are not maybe interested in engineering and sciences, do not worry. There are also universities that specialize in art and film and some of the social sciences. So you, they are, there's really an option for everyone out there and people with different interests. It caters to everybody, right? And then some of the most, one of the most interesting options for students when they ask about, um, what are the study options in Germany is the dual courses. So you get a dual education. And this is the option of taking on vocational apprenticeship, right? So it offers a combination of in-classroom teaching as well as on-the-job training. So you will be required to um, be 
um, registered at a university and you'll also be working at a company at the same time. And the reason why many students are interested in this option is because there are great career prospects attached to it. So it enables a smooth transition from education into the working environment. And once you complete the um, program, you will have obtained a university, a university degree, so your BA degree, as well as formal vocational qualification. And once you have completed this, you may also be, there's a chance that you'll be offered a permanent job at the company you are working at, right? However, to do this, you will need a training contract and a place to study. So you will still need to, to be eligible to apply to university. And one important thing to note with these dual courses is that your German language has to be mother tongue level, so C1. And this, of course, is because when you are, apart from your studies, when you are working within a company, you are going to need a certain level of the language and knowledge of the language to communicate with your colleagues and communicate with your boss and just to ensure that you experience, you get the best out of your experience. Right. And then some of the nicer things and things I like to mention to students is that once you have made it to Germany, you have access to the rest of Europe within the EU. So once you've obtained your study visa and you're living in Germany, you have more freedom to travel to neighboring countries such as the Netherlands, Denmark, Poland, and France. And travel within the EU is very easy with the train if you don't want to fly, et cetera. And not only for um, visiting, but also for your studies. If you decide, okay, I did my BA in Germany, maybe let me further my education in Netherlands. You have easier access to Netherlands as well as for working opportunities after your studies. And another great thing, and I think I would like to put emphasis on this, is this that you get the chance to build a network with an international community and with Germans. So when you're moving out into the working world, no matter where you're working, you still have these connections. Right. So very important um, slide. And this is, I think, also important for the parents or the people who will be funding these studies. So before I mention that Germany virtually has no tuition fees, however, there are important costs that you have to consider. And that is the cost of living, including health insurance, your semester fees and your transportation. As you can see the graphic on the slide, I hope it's visible to all. It gives you a general breakdown on what you'll be spending your money on. And you'll be spending roughly 800 to 900 euros, which translates to 13,000 to 14,000 rand per month just to fund your stay in Germany. And in addition to this, when you're applying for your visa, right, there is something that is called a blocked account, which is a special account in which you have to deposit a lump sum of money. So 10,000 rand, roughly 10,000 euro, excuse me, that you have to um, transfer into this account before you can obtain your visa. And from this money, um, you can withdraw this 800 to 900 euros that you'll be needing every month to um, fund your stay. And this is to prove that you are financially capable of funding your studies and your stay in Germany. And if I can compare this to South Africa, so with what I've given you right now, the information, you can expect to spend roughly 240,000 Rand per annum to fund your stay in Germany and your studies. Whereas in South Africa, it's, there's a huge gap between this cost. So if you're funding your study year for the first year, you'll maybe be spending 60 to 80,000 Rand. So you can see there's a huge gap in that. So when you are told, oh, there's no tuition fees, take this into consideration. It is very important. Right, another important slide for you guys is what you need. So what you'll need, of course, is um, your national senior certificate, so your matric, when you're finished with your matric, and this is recognized at German universities, and you will need to have completed this with a bachelor pass, and you would also have needed to complete seven subjects, and this includes mathematics, so pure maths in South Africa, maths literacy, unfortunately, is not recognized, and then you also need two languages, life orientation and three further subjects of one 
of which one has to be a natural science. And all of these subjects that you're going to apply with have to be subjects that are taught in Germany. Unfortunately, um, to my knowledge, um, Germany doesn't have or doesn't teach subjects such as business administration or economics in um, the schools. So if um, those compromise of two of your seven subjects, unfortunately, you will not be eligible to apply to do a bachelor's degree in Germany or at a German university in Germany. Right. If you'd like more information on your admission requirements, you may go to www.de forward slash admission, or you may also visit anaben.de. Right. In addition to that, you will need to prove your language proficiency in either English or German, but mostly German. So you will need a certificate proving that your level of German is sufficient enough and that you then you will be eligible to apply to these um, universities. In addition to that, you will need a German passport and a visa. And when you are applying for your visa, you are also going to need to provide a letter of acceptance from the university you have applied to, as well as proof of financial means, which I spoke to on the, spoke about on the previous slide. Right, so um, there are actually funding opportunities and scholarships to fund your stay and your studies in Germany. So a note to everyone, the DOD unfortunately does not fund have or make available scholarships for BA degrees. We start from masters going upwards and PhD. And um, there however is a, a little opportunity. And this I think it would be important and interesting for the lecturers or the, your teachers to pay attention so if there's a German school in South Africa that has a partner university in Germany, together they would have to apply for funds at the DAAD, however in Bonn, in Germany, and funds will be made available to the school to send students from the school to the partner universities to study over there. However, if you can see on the slide, the amount of money that is made available per month per student is 300 euros. And this is only a fraction of the costs that you're going to have to put towards your studies. And another thing to consider is that this is only funding available for your first year at the Potter University. So for the rest of your stay, you will have to fund it yourself. As I mentioned in the beginning, we only have DOD scholarships from masters and PhD. So for those of you who do not feel or perhaps think you are ready to pursue your bachelor's degree right now in Germany, do not fret. Um, if you are thinking of completing your undergrad in South Africa, there are still opportunities for you available to um, pursue your studies in Germany. And then you can come directly to us and ask about all these opportunities, great opportunities. And there are more programs that are available in English at master's level going onwards. So if you still have the dream to go to Germany, don't worry, it does not end here. And then there's also, um, Scholarships made available, available by German political foundations, namely the Konrad Adenauer Foundation, Friedrich Erbert, the Böll Stiftung, and the Naumann Stiftung. And these scholarships are not only awarded based on merit, however, you have to apply directly to these um, foundations and motivate yourself and prove to them that you are also very politically active or you have a strong interest in politics and that you are also very integrated in society and do things to contribute positive, positively to society. And then there are two other scholarship opportunities, namely the Bundesländer Stipendium. And this is awarded only to scholarship to students who have a German passport. And these um, scholarships are funded by individual federal states, for example, Baden-Württemberg in Germany. And then there's also the BAföG scholarship. And this is also only applicable to German passport holders. And it's equivalent to NASFIS in South Africa. So what they essentially look at is your overall and combined household income. If it's at a certain level, you can either um, receive 100% full scholarship and if it still falls within the brackets, but it's just above um, the minimal level of household income, for example, you can receive 50% scholarship. And if you'd like to find out about more funding opportunities, feel free to visit www.fundingguide.de. 
right when you have decided look i'm ready to study in germany i still want to push my german language is on a good level and i've got a scholarship or there are funds available then you have to think about starting to look for your degree as you know there's a large variety i mentioned before there's a roughly 20000 degree programs to choose from you are going to need to have access to the um, search databases so there are various ones as you can see on the dot website you can find a few but my favorite personally is my guide so my guide is a tool that will help you find the program for you and with my guide the nice thing is you can build your own profile on it and they save your previous searches and also it saves you time in the sense that it checks your eligibility already so before you apply and um before you get told maybe at the university that you weren't eligible or anything, my guide checks that for you already. Right? So then another search engine and search tool you can use is the Higher Education Compass, in which you can, they've got these options for you. As you can see, I hope the um, visual is, um, you guys can see the picture and I hope it's clear. But on top, you can select specific things that you're looking for, namely, if there's a specific course that you're looking for, the university type you want to attend or where you would like to study, you just enter it in and then they provide you with a list of courses available. And the nice thing is that they provide you with all the relevant information, as you can see with the example on the top for African Verbal and Visual Arts, it shows you that's the bachelor degree you're going to do, it's six semesters, it's full time, it gives you the location, as well as the deadlines for when you should submit your application. So um, once again, we as a DAL, unfortunately, we do not um, directly help students apply to the individual universities. It's your duty to apply directly to the universities. So the nice thing is also that the website provides you with the contact information of the international office at this university for which you need to use when you need extra information, for example, or you'd like to know um, the exact eligibility criteria or any information you'd still like to find out. Right. So once you have found your program, as I mentioned before, when you apply, you're either going to apply directly to the university or through a um, uni assist. So what UniAssist does for universities is that they process and evaluate the applications for international students before they go to the universities. And there are costs that are involved here. So it's roughly 50 euros that will pay for your first application. Thereafter, the amount is reduced. And um, another important thing to take into consideration is that the semesters, when the semester starts, is different to in South Africa. So there are some degree programs that have summer semesters that start in summer. So summer there is April, and then the intake for winter semester is in October. So while your peers here in South Africa perhaps are going to start in February or January and March, you still have this wait. But this is not necessarily a bad thing because it gives you time to prepare, to either improve your language and get all your documents together and make sure that you are ready when you get there. Right, so once all the admin of everything is complete, you have decided, look, I really want to do this. You also have found a selection of programs that are perfect for you and that you are eligible for. Let's say you've got three options. You can visit this amazing page on the Study in Germany website where it gives you information on the cities that you're going to. For example, one of your course programs you find is in Berlin, but you don't know much about Berlin. You don't know much about the people who stay there or the activities you can do there. It gives you all the information and it also comes with a lot of amazing images to look at. And it covers many, many, many of the cities in Germany. So give that a visit and look at it and be inspired. Right. Um, now I'll be talking to you about Germany um, and the safety. And I think this is also a bit comforting to the parents is that when they send you abroad to Germany, Germany is a relatively safe country. And I can tell you that from experience as well. I've been there and I know when I'm out on the streets at night, when I was out on the streets at night, I did not have that fear of being alone. I could walk freely and get back to my place safely. So that was quite comforting. 
And um, the transport system, as most people know, is amazing. In Germany, you have access to a lot of the um, street trains and underground trains. To most, in most small cities, you can walk everywhere, you can cycle everywhere. The student accommodation is safe as well. And Germany, um, from what I've heard and what I've seen in my experience, is a relatively open society. There are um, many warm and welcoming, friendly people. However, I do not want to only picture and um, paint this picture of a perfect country to you. I also want you guys to go there fully equipped with, re with re realistic expectations. So what I can say is also that things like discrimination does exist in Germany. It does exist. You might um, have experiences that are bad, but it's important to note that this, does, this is not accepted at all across the country. And the nice thing that's also comforting is that there's a relatively international community of people who go there to work, students such as yourself who might go there to study, as well as there's also um, many migrants there. So you are destined to find, maybe you click for your group or people that you can relate to more and that will help you integrate into society. Right. And then my time abroad, one of my favorite pages on our website is the My Time Abroad page. So um, it gives you real stories of dad alumni who went to Germany. Most of them went with um, master scholarships or PhD scholarships or went on summer schools or did a language course in Germany. But I think it would be nice for you to read these experiences and just to get a feel of um, what people experience in Germany from the food to the transport to the stay, maybe to the application process, etc. And But it's important to remember that each experience is unique. Yours might not be identical to the next person. So you also have to enter and go into this with a very open mind. Um, today, I'm also going to tell you a short story about a friend of mine who attended the German school in Cape Town, where the wonderful opportunity to study in Germany. So she completed her NSC certificate and decided, look, I want to study in Germany, but what she did before was research, research, research. She started looking into this from grade 11 already. I think that's the same grade that you guys are in right now. And she planned ahead. And that is what made her experience and her application process smooth. So at first, to be honest, what she said was, she was very anxious about this. She also worried about, will I be able to fund my studies? Is my language knowledge good enough? Will I be able to integrate into the society without issues? And realistically, um, what she said was, she, um, all her expectations, she told herself, look, I can do this. I need to invest in myself. I need to be confident about this. And I need to plan ahead. And she eventually got accepted at a university in Germany. And one of the things that has helped her a lot was the contact she stayed in with the international offices. So before she went there, she was in con a constant contact with the international office at the university at which she's studying. And another nice thing and support they showed is they assigned a tutor to her who really helped her prepare for going to Germany. And when she arrived there, it helped her transition smoothly. And some of the takeaways you guys can take um, with this is invest in yourself, guys. Invest, plan ahead and be sure about what you want to do. And also, if you want to integrate nicely into society, you've got to be adaptable, but not lose yourself. And then most important as well is your German language. Do not lose this. You know, um, if you don't have perfect German or speak perfect German, it won't really hinder your day-to-day -day life. However, if you really want to integrate, if you want to um, partake in a lot of activities and just get around um, without challenges, it's important that you keep your level of German up to date. And you can do this by socializing. You can do this by watching movies, by reading German books, and just taking your German language courses at school very serious right now. Right. Right, guys, we have come to the end of mm -hmm. our presentation. And I hope that I've answered all the questions that we covered and that um, you all are now equipped with all the information to do your homework about studying in Germany. If there are any further questions that you have, you may ask them. And if we don't get to them right now, do not worry. 
In the next slide, I've attached a link. I've also sent it to your teacher. Um, it's a link to a Google Drive folder that contains this presentation as well as extra information and booklets um, that will help you and give you guidelines on your study and stay in Germany. So if there are any questions or no questions, feel free to ask. I don't know, I'm not sure how we will do this. Yeah, uh, in, thank you very much. Can you see me yes. now? Yes, I do see you. And uh, you can see the scholars, and some of them are already raising their hands. Okay. Um, so if it's fine for you, pick up a few questions, and then we can start the discussion. Okay. Okay, I think. Uh, would you like to start? Uh, let me, let me. Uh, wait, I see. I can hear you. Yes. Okay. I only have one question. Mm -hmm. Please. Uh, you said, so when we were at that slide that said what you need or uh, something, it said that you need your matric and your bachelor's with like seven subjects. And you yes. stated that you need four and like one of the sciences. Mm -hmm. So does that mean that if you don't, or like, so does that mean if you don't take math score and you don't take science, it would be pointless to study um, overseas? Unfortunately for Germany to um, be eligible to apply to a university, you need your pure math and one science subject. So that is their requirement. Thank you. No problem. Um, okay, Debo, just, um, just a second. Even I investigated that last year for other scholars uh, mm -hmm. as well. Um, what I found out is actually the same information you gave us, but I was told there might be an option just to have a yeah, a tour, let's say like that, to immatriculate in a South African university, study mm -hmm. there, and changing to universities at Germany. Have you ever heard of that opportunity? Okay, yes, so I think our director will take over and answering this question for you. <laughs> Hi, <Anna>. Thank you. <laughs> Yeah, of course, it's possible. So if you are not eligible directly to the university in Germany, you can start here. You do your first year of bachelor. And after the first year of bachelor, you are eligible to all German universities from wherever you come from. So uh, this is what you can do. The question is, yeah, why should you do something uh, like this? Why not doing the bachelors here and then go for a master's, but it's possible, yeah. And what is, what is not clear, this is the decision that German universities will take. Yeah, if you have your first year of bachelor here from South Africa, it's not clear what they will recognize out of this. So maybe you have to start from the scratch in uh, Germany as well. So it is an option, but I'm not sure that it is a perfect option. That would be my answer. Thank you, Anya. Thank you. Are there any other questions? Yes, I can hear you. Let's see. And I think I can see you now. Um, my question is regarding the visa. Mm -hmm. Because you mentioned about having a block. Is that an absolute necessity to have that, or is it possible? Because I plan on becoming an au pair first mm -hmm. and using my pathway. So, is that another option I can apply for, or rather have that block, uh, blocked account? So, the blocked account, to my knowledge, is for your study visa. So, if you're going to study there directly, you'll of course need to prove your financial means. But if you have obtained, for example, an Alpe visa, I'm not too sure about the requirements there, and you are already in Germany, I am sure the process for you to apply to study there will be much easier. 
since you're already in Germany. And then um, Dr. Anya, is there any additional information or advice that you can give on that? No, it's absolutely correct what you say. So it's not our requirement or the requirement of the university. It's for the visa. So if you do not hold a German passport or another European passport, then you need a visa to enter Europe for study purposes. And the German embassy will ask for this blocked account. If not, you cannot apply for the visa. Great. Thank you. Are there any other questions? Right, so do you have questions? Um, yeah, then I just would like to pick up again um, the point you mentioned of the uh, dual studies, dual studium. Mm -hmm. um, do you have information on your website on that? I have not double checked so far. Maybe I can take this. Um, we do not have information on dual study programs on our website because it's yeah this high requirement of German language knowledge that you need. Um, where you can find detailed information of courses with the Goethe Institute, uh, Johannesburg, they just opened up a website uh, for vocational training. So there it becomes a bit clearer. And uh, we do an information session once the year, uh, only on this dual programs together with the um, German Chamber of Commerce. So I do not have the date yet, but of course we can keep you informed. So um, you can, yeah, be part of this session and get all the information that you may need. But what is really important is fluent German <laughs> knowledge. So yeah, C1 is quite, quite a barrier to, to go this way. Okay, thank you very much. I think it would be very interesting for us and very beneficial if we could be part of this meeting or of this information program. Thank you very much. More questions? Um, yes. Um, are we still in contact? Yes. Can you still hear yeah. me? Yes, I can hear okay. perfectly. Perfect, perfect. Um, what I see from our scholars, they are very mm -hmm. happy and they are very well informed. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for the presentation. Um, Thank you. There are no more questions from our side. Mm -hmm. Okay, perfect. If there are no questions right now, as I mentioned before, you may feel free to pop us an email at dodd.ac.za or visit our website for more information, as well as the study in Germany website. This has a lot of good information for you. And as you can see below, I have also mentioned before, there's a link to the Google Drive form that has a lot of brochures and pamphlets. For information, I've sent this to your teacher too. And you're also free to visit some of our social media channels. You'll find us on Instagram, or on Facebook, on Twitter, as well as LinkedIn. But thank you for your attention and for being a great crowd. And it was an honor and privilege to be on behalf of the DOD. And I wish you all the best with your studies. And I really hope you take up on this opportunity and do your homework before doing it. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Thank you so much. That was extremely informative and interesting. And yeah, thank you so much. And I hope. Hopefully we can stay in contact and yeah, we, um, we are eagerly uh, looking forward maybe to hosting you next year. I received the information from Dr. Alaka that you will be here in person next year in case That will be great. That will be great. <laughs> Wonderful. Cool. Then okay, thank you. Much. 
Have a good day and nice Thank regard. Have work. a great day. Thank you. Danke schön. Tschüss. <laughs> 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 <laughs>